setting boundaries is an important skill. It helps to lead a life in harmony with oneself, reduce tensions, build relationships that serve us, generate results and lead a meaningful life. Setting boundaries begins within, information in the form of emotions, thoughts, feelings, needs, if read internally, can form the foundation of external boundary setting in relationships with oneself, in relationships, in a group, and in the world. Self-awareness is therefore the basis for setting boundaries in various situations. The exercises we present to you below cover various aspects of setting boundaries and invite you to learn them in a group workshop mode. Exercise, pushing. Exercise, check what will happen if. The exercise is to be carried out in pairs. It is advisable for the facilitator to demonstrate the initial position with a volunteer. Further guidance of the participants, the next elements of the exercise will be communicated during by the facilitator. People stand opposite each other in pairs, they agree who is person A and who is person B, they raise their hands to the height of their face and mutually lean their palms on the palms standing opposite each other, they touch each other with their palms. Person A's task is to press on person B's palms. Person B's task is to react in accordance with themselves, respond with pressure, retreat, resist, change their reaction depending on how they perceive the situation. Then there is a change of roles in the pair, person B is the pressing one. Next, invite the group to analyze, look at what was happening. Explore the reaction to pressure in most resistance, which caused more pressure. Explore those relationships in which there was no resistance, the press across the boundary of the pressed. Explore the situation in which both sides pressed more and neither gave way conflict. Look at the emotions and thoughts that appeared during this task. Notice the reactions you wanted to take but gave up for some reasons. Variant B. Return to the exercise and now let the person being pressed say clearly but calmly enough, putting only minimal resistance, what will be the reaction of the presser? Observe this. Variant C. Do another such experiment, that the person being pressed without warning withdraws all their resistance by violently moving their hands and moving aside. What will happen to the presser? How will the person moving away feel? How will the energy of this interaction change? What will happen to the pressure? Draw conclusions about the optimal way of influencing the pressed person in this exercise. How to set a boundary to pressure, whether pressure breeds pressure, whether giving up the field is also signaling a boundary. Notice what happens to the pressing person when you stop resisting fighting and when she loses support in your resistance, what caused the pressure to disappear. Notice how your life will change if you start setting boundaries instead of running away or getting into conflict. Exercise, treats. This exercise allows you to observe the process of setting boundaries within yourself in an internal dialogue. It gives you the opportunity to notice an internal dialogue in which voices appear advocating for setting a boundary and those that allow others to cross it, as well as those that encourage it, tempting with pleasure or belonging. We provide various treats on the workroom floor, candies, fruits, nuts, and seeds. They can be in containers, on plates, etc. They can be provided by the facilitator or brought by the participants. The group sits in a circle quite close person to person. The first variant, two people are tasked with treating participants with treats. The second variant, vessels with treats circulate freely among the participants in the circle. In each of the variants, we do this as long as possible, we do not succumb to the reflex to stop the exercise due to the passage of time or questioning looks of participants, the task of the facilitator is to keep the process of delivering treats in progress. We leave the choice space to people, we wait until the participants start refusing to accept treats, feeling satiety, excess, contacting their boundary in accepting what is good. We invite the group to analyze whether and when the participants stopped treating themselves for what reason they did not stop drawing treats. How it affected them that others were still drawing. What about those who did not stop? For what reason did you still draw? Did you not have enough? What beliefs stood behind not refusing, not looking for your boundary in acceptance? What made some participants stop taking more treats? Who set a limit for themselves in drawing and burdening their body with consuming sugar? Exercise, accepting tasks. This exercise supports noticing internal boundaries and setting them in the world and in relationships, especially when we have to accept burdens, tasks and in relationships. It can take place in threes, pairs, or in a variant of a show of volunteers for the rest. 
The show variant, especially repeated several times, can be a form that best illustrates the process of setting or not setting boundaries. Volunteer A stands in a prominent place. The other participants or volunteers, the rest observe, are tasked with giving gifts to the volunteer. We do not give the volunteer instructions on how to behave in this situation. His behavior as well as that of subsequent volunteers will be the subject of observation and learning for the rest. Each variant of this person's behavior will be an opportunity for analysis and inference later. So we invite several volunteers in turn to the same exercise. The leader can prepare items that are gifts. These can be any items like books, folders, writing utensils, pots plates, brooms, garbage bags, etc. Whatever we find in the workspace. If these are sensitive items, they are particularly useful for the task, but they should be protected from destruction. A special variant of gift items are balloons after inflating. You can make symbolic inscriptions on them such as time, pleasure, rest, coffee, sweets, friendship, housing, money, car, conversation, holidays, work, etc. Balloons are safe, their shape and softness allow for many to be accepted and easily show excess. Similarly, boxes can work, but their edges and weight can make it difficult to accept more. The donors should try at all costs to give their items, when the volunteers already have their hands, arms etc. Occupied, they should try to arrange the gifts on them in a different way, attach with a string etc. As long as the volunteer does not refuse to accept the gift, you can also arrange them on the feet, attach to clothes etc. However, the leader should not reveal this part, but only be ready for it and support if the participants start acting this way. Volunteers will probably try to accept them and agree to cross boundaries and this process is a space for analysis and learning. Questions, what made you accept gifts, how did you accept them, when did you realize that you already have too much, how much more did you accept than you could, what internal signals of too much did you skip, how should you formulate information about your boundary, what conclusions from this, how will your life change when you set boundaries earlier, how much can you actually take on, how much will you accept. Is this something constant or can it change? Exercise, proximity and distance. The exercise shows the process of setting boundaries, regulating the distance at which we stay with different people in the group, and the level of current skills in this area. The volunteer sits in a chosen place in the room and surrounds himself arbitrarily with a rope as a sign of his boundaries. He can add some special markings, e.g. drawings on pieces of paper around his space, e.g. A drawing of a dog, a door, a key, at his discretion. The rest of the people in the group form a line standing shoulder to shoulder so that the volunteer in his space can simply sit in the circle of the rope marking his boundaries and see each of the remaining people at a similar distance from himself. The volunteer invites the next people closer to him by name, one by one. He directs each of them towards him using instructions like closer, further, stop, approach, leave, that's enough, at a pace suitable for him, the volunteer can change his mind, bring others closer and further away from him, put them next to and behind him if he wants, it's his choice, he can also not invite someone at all, or closer than at the beginning of the exercise. If the size of the group allows, it would be good if he carried out this action with everyone, he can also only with selected people. Pay special attention to observing yourself and your feelings, this is the main clue for the volunteer and the approaching person. Any internal discomfort is a sign that the person has come too close. It's about recognizing in yourself this readiness for contact or the need to set a boundary. The volunteer can say that he feels better or worse with this closeness before he decides that the person can approach closer or further. He can also verbalize emotions, feelings, and thoughts related to the approach of this person. The approaching person can also decide how close they want to approach and reveal this to the inviting person. The approaching person can refuse to carry out the instructions of the inviting person, they cannot refuse to accept the volunteer's boundary. After a series of such experiences, the group sits in a circle and analyzes the process of setting boundaries. How did you feel when people approached you? Was inviting and distancing people easy? What is it like when someone comes too close? What needs to be done? How can we know that we can approach closer? What is it like in life when we let someone come too close? What is it like when we don't try to invite someone closer when we want to? How to recognize the optimal distance in a relationship? How to regulate distance closeness in a relationship? What do I decide to do more and what less? Exercise, spinning circle. 
The exercise illustrates the ability to stand up for oneself, to break away from the group, while others perform the same task. Participants circle around the room as quickly as possible, marching step even running, people can have different pace, but everyone must move quickly around the room. The task is defined as a spinning circle of all people, its condition is that everyone moves in the same way. The leader keeps the participants in motion, encourages them not to stop despite the passage of time, encourages further effort, to increase effort, after a considerable amount of time, e.g. 5 minutes, he uses persuasion to encourage them, such as others are doing it too, it's best for you, it's good for you, movement is health, paradoxically provoking refusal. The leader generates this tension, seemingly only encouraging the participants. He also invites self-observation of their feelings and needs. If people stop, slow down, break away from the group, the leader should not pay attention to it, allowing them to act in this way. After noticing significant signs of fatigue, we stop the circle and invite to rest sitting down. We watch out for dispersion, we act so that it does not occur, we do not take a break, we do not agree to loose conversations. The circle sits down to even out the breath, remaining in contact with the experience. We invite the group to analyze the events, how did you move? What kept you moving? What thoughts and emotions did you have? What needs were revealed in you? Who have you allowed yourself to stop moving? Who have you circled to the end? What would it be like to stop? What benefit did those who stopped or slowed down have? What made you delay so long? What did you give up by agreeing to circle like the others? What impact did the group have? What impact did the leadership, cheering have on you? What is it like to set a boundary, stand up for yourself and oppose the generally accepted norm? What are the risks associated with such behavior?